The new year is as good a time as any to reflect on the past year, to remember what God has done for us with thanksgiving, with praise. We're going to consider the decisions we made and the path we're on, and if this is the direction that we want to keep going, or do we need to change of course? We're going to acknowledge where we fell down, and we're going to confess our sins, armed with the incredible, mind-blowing truth that God will not only forgive us, but forget. He holds nothing against us. We can't forget. The enemy will ever try to remind us of our failures, to keep us frozen. But as far as the East is from the West, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Amazing. God forgets. And in that strength and that powerful knowledge, we can go forward with a fresh boldness. We can conquer the mountains before us. We can have victory in Christ. This is your time. Welcome to Morning Tea. Hi, I'm Joanne Jolie, and I am so glad you're here today. In the new year, we get really excited. We get excited to move off into the future with our plans, to get things right this year, to set our priorities right, to learn how to trust God more, and to make every decision in faith, since we know that doing anything without faith is sin. And also, remembering that unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. And we certainly don't want another year of laboring in vain and seeing no results for all our efforts done in our own strength and our own understanding. So my husband and I have an exercise we do regularly. It's called the Daily Temperature Reading, a DTR. And what this is is a marriage checkup. It's really just to see where there might be some problems that should be nipped in the bud. So here's a list of things to consider as you take a reading on your spiritual temperature. Number one, do you know the essentials of your faith with such confidence that you can share them easily with a friend or a neighbor? The first Gentile believers knew little or nothing about the rich Jewish history of the gospel that they were responding to. It's a process that had been going on for about a thousand years. Paul, as a learned Jew, was well steeped in all of it, but he was very careful to keep it simple. And he sums it up, For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. This is the basis for our hope. Without a living savior, our faith has absolutely no meaning. It has no use that so we would be really pitiful. We miss the mark, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And what do we get for our sinning? Judgment, along with mercy for the taking, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And what do we have to do to get eternal life? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So commit these things to your memory and then dive into the scriptures that Paul referenced to get the rest of the story, which leads to number two, read the scriptures. Too many proclaiming believers are ignorant of the Bible. These are the very words of God. These are the things that he wants us to know, that we need to know. Um, they're our sustenance for this mortal life. And it's the place where we can go to find the answers to every question we have. So if you've not read the entire Bible, it's time now to get an overview. So start at the beginning, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And from there, read a chapter a day, go through the whole Old Testament, which points always to the Messiah. Get to the New Testament, which is all about the Messiah coming and Jesus and his, the first believers and till you get down to Revelation 22, verse 21, and the end. Just go for the gist of it. Don't try to understand everything. We never will. God will reveal things to us on a when we are ready to know basis. And many times in the scriptures, he tells us that in order to find, we have to seek. And he has special rewards for those who go after him. This is what he wants us to do. Now, number three, all of the scriptures are summed up in the most important command, which is the same to the Jews in the Old Testament and to believers in the New Testament. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So love God and love Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. So. The big and powerful questions we need to ask ourselves all below are built on that command. Do I love God and do I love Jesus with everything that I am? Do I have a growing desire to spend more time with God, getting to know who he is, trying to find out why he created it, what was behind this, what does he want from us? And am I spending quality time praying, reading the Bible, meditating on the scriptures? 
Am I growing in my desire to obey and please God? Do I obey out of, of gratitude and, and love for God or is it just really guilt and fear? Have I fully surrendered to the Holy Spirit? Do I ask God every day to fill me up with the Holy Spirit? And am I becoming more aware of my sins in my life? Do I repent on a daily basis and receive forgiveness and cleansing from God? Have I fully, truthfully repented of all past and current sins? Have I made restitution with my brothers for any wrongs that I did against them? Have I sought reconciliation? Am I seeking God's will? Am I doing what he wants me to do with my life? Am I involved in my local community of believers, reaching out to those around me? And am I praying for the people at my work, in my neighborhood? And how am I practicing my religion, which is to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world? How are you serving the poor and the disadvantaged? Are you teaching your children the importance of helping the poor and including them in the community service that you do? And what are you doing to keep yourself from evil and becoming stained by this world? If you're an older woman, are you teaching the younger woman how to be busy at home? Is there evidence of grace growing in your life? Is there a gratitude to God every day for his great love and grace and mercy for saving me from what I deserve? And am I seeing the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit in my life? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Husbands and wives, are you respecting and honoring each other? Are you teaching your children in the way they should go? Instructing them in the scriptures, teaching them how to pray, and how to live a life that's going to please God. And be mindful that all our works are going to be tested with fire. So anything that is wood, hay, stubble, it's going to be burned up. The rewards are for whatever survives that heat. So in everything we do, we need to carefully examine ourselves. Examine the motives where it all rests so that nothing will have been a waste because the Lord built up the house. Thank you so much for being here. I want you to have my free business vision statement. You can find the link down below. Um, this is a first step in committing your way to the Lord as you move forward with your plans this coming year. I wish you many blessings. Look for them. They're all around you. Bye-bye.